Have you ever wondered when you should put your plants outdoors to take advantage of that outdoor light so you can grow those big 10 foot plants or that are gonna bring in those 10 pound yields? Well, in this video, we're gonna get into it. You're here with Mark Batwell on perfectgardens.com. Please remember to like, share, and subscribe. And if you haven't checked out our Instagram or Facebook, I highly recommend to do so. Please also make sure to check out our $2.99 membership where you'll have access to over 115 growers ready and willing to assist you through your growing practices. Make sure to check out the link below for the VIP link if you're looking for a more one-on-one -on -one experience. Make sure to hit the join button on the bottom of every video. Because we are going to be talking about outdoor growing, I highly recommend to go back and check out my 38 other videos I've talked about outdoor growing. This video is going to have new details, new information where I've never released. I've had this, uh, this very specific Excel spreadsheet that actually gives worldwide information of how to grow these plants. And I've never released it, but on this video, I'll be releasing a portion of this information that will be immensely valuable for anyone that wants to grow their medicine worldwide. But don't think you shouldn't go back and watch those 38 other videos because those other videos will give other details. This, this is going to be giving specific information where you'll be able to actually put your plants outdoor and they won't go to flowering because you put them out too early. If you are an experienced grower, I highly recommend to just skip ahead and find your latitude lines. Basically, how do you do that? Just on Google, say latitude for so-and-so or latitude for Monterey, California, latitude for Boulder, Colorado. And it's going to give you your specific latitude. And then you just go ahead, go to your specific section in this video and get the information you're looking for. I highly do recommend though, to make sure to go back and get the promotion codes that are at the beginning section of every single different latitude section I cover in this video. Okay, so some of the basic equipment you're gonna to need to grow outdoors year round and really take advantage of the most earliest time you can potentially put your plants outdoors. You're gonna need things like a heating system. Later in the season, you might need shade cloths because you might live in a really hot environment. You're going to need blackout material. That's going to be the most important thing, your, your ability to completely black out the environment. And if you're not using photos and you're using autos, then you're not going to really have to worry about this. You might potentially need a little bit of supplemental light. You'll need some channels and clamps. And those are just the things that help clamping your shade cloth or plastic material to cinch it down so it's not blowing around. You might need wood, nutrients, beneficials. And if you have water problems of any level, I highly recommend Drops of Balance. This video is not going to be about the materials you need. Like I said, go back, watch the old videos. Those videos are going to give you more details. So the Excel spreadsheet we're going to be going over actually has close to 10,000 separate data points, as you can see right here, uh, going, going worldwide of anything and everything you can run into uh, from cities and states, everything across the board. And it just doesn't go over latitude directions. It actually goes into the angle of the light of how the sun comes in, high temperatures, low temperatures, humidity, things along those lines. Mm -hmm. Today, though, all we're going to be covering is a couple main data points. And it's just going to be these right here. It's going to be your latitude, when your veg starts, when your flowering starts, and then the number of total days your plants can be in veg outdoors. You know me, I would rather teach you how to fish than feed you a fish. So how I got this information, uh, most of this information actually, was just by going to timeanddate.com. After you go to time and date, all you're going to do is go to the sun and moon, click on it. You're going to type in your city. I'm just going to say Boulder. It should pop up. Again, this is worldwide. From there, you're going to scroll all the way down and you're going to be looking for civil Twilight. One of the reasons why I made this video this year is because I've already started hearing, once again, people saying you need 14 and a half hours of light to stay in veg. And that is incorrect. You need 15 and a half hours of light to keep these plants in veg. And it's down to literally the minute moment of light in that time. So you're, what you're going to be wanting to do is count up the amount of hours a civil twilight in your area. And as long as it has more than 15 and a half hours of light, you will be able to stay in veg if you're growing with photo plants. If you have under 15 and a half hours of light, your plants will start to flower. Okay, so the worldwide map we'll be using today is the Gleason map. 
there are many different types of maps out there that represent the world we live in. The issue with a lot of these maps I don't like is the main issue is the landmass that and how they represent the, uh, the landmass in proportion to who has what and how much space they have. The best way to utilize this map today is by having a, an imaginary aerial view as if like you're God looking directly over the North Pole and you're looking directly over it and now you're able to actually see what's going on. And I think by us looking at the length of day using the Gleason map, I think it best represents the importance of where people live in proportion to uh, the phenomenal growing seasons based upon temperature throughout the entire year because of, once again, the amount of light they have and the amount of light they don't have later in the season. So throughout this presentation, I'm going to be giving you grid lines like this that is going to represent all the way from the North Pole all the way to the South. Okay, so the reason why I like to see it from this point of view is because the ideal growing range that has relatively a year-round growing season is between 30 degrees to 45 degrees, or also negative 30 to negative 45 in the Southern Hemisphere. But as you can see, there's not a lot of land mass in that area right here to be able to actually grow and have phenomenal growing seasons. When you come up here, you can see right here the land mass that is it, that around the world that is able to really just have a nice growing season year round. In my viewpoint is the reason why the United States is such a powerhouse is because its ability to grow food year round. I'll be going through this map using grid lines uh, and going through the latitudes for each and every section, starting at 75 degrees and working my way up. The next section will be 75 to 60, then 60 to 45, 45 to 30, Again, talking about the latitude of your area. The reason why the latitude is so significant is because these sections right here is where your the length of the day actually gets longer. And I remember living in Alaska when I was in the military, and I just remember half the year, it was literally day almost the entire time. And people would go out at three o'clock in the morning and play Frisbee golf up in Alaska. It was, uh, it was insane. And and people would start drinking in the winter at one o'clock in the afternoon and not feel guilty at all because it's already dark. And obviously, if you're growing plants that are light sensitive, you're going to want to know the photo periods and the length of the day when it goes beyond 15 and a half hours of light and when it begins to reduce back below 15 and a half hours and then also understanding how to control your environment. But this video is not about that. It's all about the length of day. Okay, so obviously, as you go farther north, there's not really a lot of places people are going to live comfortably. So when you're talking about Greenland or Norway, they actually have a total of 193 days. So if you're talking about Greenland, Greenland specifically, uh, calf, and I can't say this name, latitude 83, your veg time starts March 12th. Your flowering uh, starts October 1st, and you have a total of 193 days of veg time. For me, if I was growing this area and I had a greenhouse that could actually handle a colder environment, I would be focusing on gaining a rhythm of blacking out. Obviously, because you're going to have more than enough light out there to stay in veg, and your issue is about really putting your plants into flowering. So... The benefit about this situation, though, is once you get into the rhythm, you could potentially veg for a month and go to flowering and repeat that cycle about three times this entire season without having to use any supplemental light or very little more in the last row that you're going in. Once again, Norway has 184 days of veg. Main issues you're going to be dealing with is the temperature. For a powerful full spectrum LED experience, the Mars Hydro FCE 6500 sets the bar to success. At 730 watts, the full spectrum with red diodes will deliver dense, terpene rich flowers. Powered by a Mozo dimmable driver, maximize your yield up to a 5x5 grow area. Adjustable aluminum LED bars give you the flexibility to customize your light patterns and distribution of light over the canopy. High efficiency means you'll save on your electric while increasing profitability. The 730 watt FCE 6500 is under $600. To save a little bit more cash, head over to MarsHydro.com and use promo code MARK at checkout. 
Okay, so as we move into latitude 75 to 60, obviously there's going to be more cities, there's going to be more people living in these areas. But as you, once again, as you go farther up north, you're going to have more veg time because your day is extended because you have more light up there. And again, when you have more light, you have more natural veg time. So your focus is going to be into forced flowering. If you have autos, not going to be a big deal. I like photos because of the area I live in. You guys might be focusing on wanting to find some really good auto strains because you won't have to worry about the length of day. As you Again, want to really pay attention to your latitude, right? So that at 72 degrees, your veg time starts at March 25th, flowering starts at September 19th, and you have a total of 179 days of natural veg time. Once again, where the day is longer than 15 and a half hours light. Okay, so as you go further down, your latitude here is going to be 70.6 meaning your veg time is going to start March 27th. Your flowering is going to start September 12th. Because of how our sun works in the north, you get more of a 12 and 12 period as you go closer to the equator. As you go farther up north, you're going to have more daylight as it goes into the summer, and you're going to have more nighttime as it goes into the winter. So latitude 69.2, your natural veg time starts at March 28th, your flowering starts September 11th, and you're going to have a total of 170 days of natural veg time. Once again, I might have made a mistake on the count or something along those lines, so you're definitely going to want to go back to time and date. You're going to want to double check your latitude and compare it to this chart. And if I did make a mistake, please leave a note in the comments so I can update or even add another place in the world. So I'm just going to start to go a little bit faster because I think you guys are starting to see the rhythm of this. Latitudes, 667. I'm going to stop talking about the city and state. And I'm just going to focus on the latitude, veg time, flowering time, and the total days of veg. So as we go to 66.9, your veg time starts on March 31st, flowering starts September 10th. As you go a little farther down to your latitude is 65.6, your natural veg starts April 2nd, your flowering starts September 10th, you have a total of 161 days of veg. And remember, this video is all about the length of day when you're able to put your plants outdoors and they're not going to go into flowering. It's not about how to create the right environment to grow. It's not about humidity and temperature and all these other things you're going to have to battle. It's specifically when you can plant your plants outdoors and they will not go to flowering. They will stay in natural veg. As you go a little farther down to 64.1, your veg time starts April 8th and your flowering starts September 8th. And you have a total of 149 days of veg. As you drop down to 62.8, your veg time starts April 5th and your flowering starts September 6th. You have a total of 154 days of veg. See, I, I think I might have made a mistake right here in counting. That happens a little bit. Just, just know it. Yeah, it happens. So as we drop a little further down to 60 degrees, uh, it's going to be in the Yukon. That's uh, right. You have Alaska and then you have the Yukon right here. It's going to be in this section right here. Your veg starts April 8th. And your flowering starts September 3rd, and you have a total of 148 days of veg. Organishield is the next generation pest control solution and a must to have in your toolbox. Organishield is the one and only product you'll need for bug control. No oils, no insect tolerance. Organishield fights aphids, mites, fungus gnats, thrips, white flies, caterpillars, and so much more. So whether you are a hobbyist gardener, a farmer, or you own a facility, you will encounter some type of bug issue. Organishield comes as a concentrate to be diluted with water to fit any size bug management that is needed. Together, we can change the way we approach our problems to ensure a healthy, successful crop. Okay, so now we're talking about latitudes 60 through 45. And this is where, again, where I want you guys to really pay attention. When you guys start to just see the landmass right here, for the majority of this year, really from 45 degrees all the way up to 90, about six months out of the year, this is under ice, okay, or under snow. It's under permafrost or whatever you want to call it. 
And so they're not able to get their seeds into the ground unless they have a greenhouse of some situation. That's why if anyone that grew up or lived in the area of 30 to 45 degrees north, and you look at your landmass, this is the sweet spot throughout the entire world. It's you just, you have the best climate, you have the most even amount of day and night, and just be grateful where you live. Okay, so Alaska, latitude, 59 degrees. Your veg time starts April 9th. Flowering starts September 2nd. You have a total of 146 days of veg. As we drop a little bit further down over here, once again, you're going to want to look for your own latitude. If it's not up here in some area, and it doesn't matter where you live. I mean, you want to double check it. It might be off just a touch, but your key thing is identifying your latitude. If you find out where your latitude is, these numbers are going to be the same. And if it isn't correct, please leave a note down below and I'll double check my own stuff. Putting in all these data points is not easy. Nights get late and at, at times I do make mistakes. Okay, so Alberta, latitude 45.1. Your veg time starts April 17th. Your flowering starts August 25th, and you have a total of 130 days of natural veg time. As you drop down to 50 degrees latitude, British Columbia, your veg time will start April 23rd. Your flower time is going to start August 19th. You have a total of 118 days of veg time. As you guys start to get uh, closer and closer uh, down to this 45 degree mark, growers that really do know what they're doing, they're going to be starting veg indoors. They'll be transplanting their plants outdoors. They'll be taking advantage of forced flowering to get additional crops off to bring in more yield through, uh, throughout the season. So good growers, if they know what they're doing, they will be able to take advantage of these extended growing seasons and bring in more yield which means a better return on investment, obviously, year-round. So, okay, so as we drop down to 48 degrees, Quebec, uh, your veg time starts at April 27th. Your flowering starts August 15th, and you have a total of 110 days of veg. Once again, this is in between these two purple lines. Okay, so Newfoundland, uh, latitude 45, and if I remember straight, that's over in this area. Your veg time starts... April 29th, flowering starts August 13th. You have a total of 106 days of veg. Let's drop a little further down to 45 degrees. Down over here, Michigan. Your guys' veg time starts May 2nd. And your flowering time starts August 10th. And you have a total of 100 days of veg time outdoors. All right, Nova Scotia. Same thing or very close to it. Natural veg time starts May 3rd. Flowering starts August 9th. And you have a total of 98 days of natural veg time. If you go drop down to Montana or Idaho at a latitude of 45 degrees, roughly, your veg time starts May 4th and your flowering starts August 8th. And you guys have a total of 96 days of veg. No matter what nutrient line, pot size, or media you choose, there is one thing that everyone should have in their home. Drops of Balance is composed of sulfated minerals that clean the water while adding 34 plus trace minerals. Plants need these trace minerals to complete many complex biological processes. We often only look at the MPK value on our products. Beyond the NPK, trace minerals are the key components to support not only the plant's nutritional needs, but the soils as well. Give your plants in the soil the advantage it needs and be on your way to growing healthier, more vigorous, nutritional packed plants. Drops of Balance comes in concentrated form and bottled in 8, 16, and 32 ounces. Grab your bottle today and see the balance you've been missing. Okay, as you drop further down, we'll go to New Hampshire or Oregon or Minnesota, Michigan, Ontario, this relative area, your natural veg time starts May 4th, May 5th, and your flowering starts August 7th. And you guys have a total of 94 days of natural veg time where you're able to take advantage. If you're good at what you do, you'll be able to take advantage of this additional light to be able to grow big plants. You'll be able to force flower, bring in extra yield. Okay, very similar. We'll go to the top one, New Hampshire, 44.3. Natural veg starts May 6th. 
Flowering starts August 6. You have a total of 92 days of veg. We'll go ahead and drop all the way down. This one's a mistake right here, as you can see. As you can see right here, it's just very uniform. The world we live in is very uniform. It's like a clock. It does not change. It is so systematic. I can pull up my Excel spreadsheet from last year, and I just want to double check everything because I'm not going to be off much. And if it is off like this, it's because I miscounted for uh, or something. So on Wyoming, Ontario, Wisconsin, Vermont, Maine, all of you guys that are you at the 44 degrees latitude, again, you're going to have to look up your city and state. Your veg time starts May 6th. Your flowering starts August 6th. And you guys have roughly 92 uh, days of natural veg time outdoors. As you get down to 43 degrees, you have Oregon and different places in Oregon or Wisconsin. Your natural veg time starts May 6th uh, through May 8th, and your natural flowering time starts August 4th, roughly. I do recommend as you do put your plants outdoors, if you're getting close to this date or right on this date, and, and you might want to put in some supplemental light. And it's not, you don't need a lot of light, just a little bit of light is going to make sure to ensure your plants stay in flowering just for a couple of days, May 7th, May 8th, May 9th, and then you can turn off the supplemental light knowing confidently your plants are not going to go into flower, get all funky, and then they're going to have to come back into veg later. Okay, a little further down. You have latitude 43 to 42. Uh, this is New York, Vermont, New Hampshire, Wyoming, Michigan, New York, Idaho, Massachusetts, all the way through I Iowa, all the way through this portion. Uh, most of your guys' veg time starts between May 9th through May 12th. Okay, and as you guys can see this right here. You just have to look up your area where you live in latitude and then just compare it to this video, just swing over and you're going to be able to see when you could put your plants outdoors and not worry about them going to flowering early. And you're going to be able to identify how much of that outdoor season you're going to be able to take advantage of before the colder weather comes in. And at that point, once again, you might have to put some plastic over Maybe you have heaters or some way of controlling that environment to once again extend that growing season you're living in just a little further so you're able to bring in that crop. If you live in this area, you're going to have roughly between 86 to close to 79 days of natural veg time. And once again, this is between the areas of 45 degrees and 30. And this is why the majority of our plants are growing in these areas is because it is the ideal growing season. If you get outside of these areas, it drops below where you don't have any natural veg time and starts to just get too hot. As you live in these areas, Utah, Georgia, Rhode Island, between the latitudes of 41.9 all the way down to 40.9, as you can see, it varies. It does vary a little bit. So you definitely do want to know where you live. I mean, even just a, a point, let's see when it changes, a point two uh, is your natural veg time will start a day earlier or a day later, I mean. And this is where it is important because if you just put your plants out a day early, they will go to flowering. It will shock them. And that is that is a lot of people don't realize how sensitive these plants actually are. They are a feminine energy and they will get upset at you fairly quickly. As you go once again, further down, all the way down here, there is a difference between up to about four days of natural veg time. So well, actually up to six days of natural veg times, as you can see up here in Utah, you have a total of 81 days of veg, and in only a one degree difference, you have only 75 days of natural veg time. The benefit, though, of living in areas uh, closer to where you have less veg time is that your area of where you live will stay warmer longer. Obviously, if you have the proper growing environment and you know what you're doing, you should be able, once again, also to keep bringing in yields, crops, food, whatever you're doing. You go a little further down from Montana, Ohio, latitudes at 40.8. Your natural veg time starts May 15th. Your, your flowering starts July 28th, and you have a total of 75 days natural veg time. Let's go and drop a load further down to 40.28 degrees, New Jersey. Your veg time starts May 16th. Your flowering starts July 26th. You have a total of 70 days of natural veg time. Go a little further down to Boulder, Colorado. 
your latitude is 40 degrees. Your natural veg time starts May 17th. Your flowering starts July 25th. And you have a natural veg time of 69 days. Go a little further down to Nevada, a latitude of 39.7. Your natural veg time starts May 18th. Your flowering starts July 24th. And you have a natural veg time of 67 days. Okay, so let's go to the middle of California. You have a, your latitude starts at 39.4. Your veg time starts May 19th. Your flowering starts July 23rd. You have a natural veg time of 65 days. Drop a little further down to Colorado Grand Junction. I know a lot of growers down there. 39 degrees uh, at latitude. You have your veg time starts May 21st. Your flowering starts July 21st. And you have a total of 61 days of veg. Okay, so let's go to Kansas. Kansas, uh, latitude 39 degrees. Your veg time starts May 21st. Flowering starts July 22nd. You have a total of 62 days of veg. Let's drop a little further down the center. Uh, Utah Moab, Moab, latitude 38.5 degrees. Your veg time starts May 22nd. Your flowering starts July 21st. And you have a total of 60 days of natural veg time. In Kentucky, you have 37 degrees. Your veg time starts at May 26th. Your flowering starts July 16th. And you have a total of 51 days of natural veg time. Okay, let's keep going. So Colorado uh, City of Trinidad is at 37 degrees point one. Your veg time starts May 28th. Your flowering starts July 13th. And you have a total of 46 days of veg. Oklahoma, a lot of growers over there. Latitude, 35.4. Veg time starts June 7th. Flowering starts July 3rd. You have a total of 26 days of natural veg time. Okay, so in New Mexico or Arizona, your latitude at 35.1, your veg time starts June 12th or June 3rd, as you can see, just a little difference. Your flowering starts July 1st. As you see right here, I made a mistake right here. Yeah, uh, going to have to go back, double check these because it is too far off. And that's how I know. And same with this one, North Carolina, this one's too far off. It's just a typo, no big deal. But you can see it, whenever there's a variation that's too great, you know, it's easy to, uh, or it's too close to the latitude. I know if I went back and double check, uh, I'd be able to count the difference and realize it was just work too late that night or something. Okay, so as you go all the way down to latitude 35, right here at 35.0 uh, is basically where it stops. Anything below 39.9, there is no veg time, no natural veg time, and your plants will just continue to keep flowering. So what's the benefit in that? The benefit in that is that if you have a good growing area with a, a nice environment, it doesn't get too hot too long because as you have that sun that spends most of its time in in this region right here this is the equator so the sun the sun's orbit or whatever way you want to call it exists in this area because it, it exists longer in these areas it's going to stay warmer more often and get hotter which will not create a, a solid growing environment the thing about it though is that you do your plants will go to flowering no matter what. So if you veg indoors and give them that extended light or put a supplemental light in this area, and then you just turned off the supplemental light, your plants would go straight to flowering. And, and how you could control the temperature is really just by using a shade cloth. If you did those two things, you'd, you'd be able to grow some really great flower. And that's why for many years, a lot of the flower was grown in Mexico. Everybody, Johnny with Perfect Gardens. I want to say thanks, Mark. I got my shipment of pit moss in just in time to do a whole lot of gardening. Got a whole big garden over there. Got five big bags of some plentiful. Plentiful is the organic with a little bit of nutrients in there already. So be perfect for what I need. So I'm going to see how all this stuff turns out in the garden. Anybody has any questions about or is looking for some pit moss, you can go to 
www.pitmoss.com and put in Perfect 15 for a 15% discount. Stay tuned. Thanks, Mark. Okay, so as you keep going all the way through from latitudes 34 all the way down to 29 degrees, uh, no veg time, no flowering time. Same all the way through as you go all the way back over. Um, and then it starts to pick back up right when you get past 35, negative 35 degrees, they begin to have a natural veg time again. As you can see, I jumped to uh, negative 36 and that's in these areas. As you get past right here, this is the 35 degree mark. So down over here is where it's going to be nice to be able to grow the plant. Um, it should have a nice growing environment right here. It probably has a nice growing environment right here in this tip. And then all along the coast, is where it's going to be the ideal areas to be growing our type of plant worldwide. But it's not a lot of areas, as you can see. And that's why uh, when you see land mass and you see uh, worldwide production, and it's in this area, this is where the, major the majority of the world right here is this right here. And this right here is the world, the, uh, the majority of the world's food is produced. Okay, so every everywhere else is where the food that gets produced here gets distributed. As you go a little further from negative 40 all the way down, same situation, like it's almost completely identical from the north to the south, like a, the symmetrical, beautiful clock. Uh, as you can start to compare it, the uh, veg times get longer and longer. So remember, this video was just about talking about when you could put your plants outdoors and not be worried about them going into flowering early. I hope you like this video. Please remember to like, share, and subscribe. And guys, if you ever need to spend a dollar in this industry, please hit us up at perfectgardens.com. If I can find you the product, I'll give you a better deal. Thank you so much. And please leave a comment. Have a great grow, everyone. You described the, the methodology I always talk to people about is, is you can either go faster or you can improve the situation. Right. It's like if we can create just the right amount of healthy stress, the plants are going to reward us over and over again. That's what they're there to help us. And we're there to help them.